the rest of our me. class. I did. No, you can't kick stream. me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so you no, design. you don't. Um, Here, so we are like honored this? today because we have a guest speaker. She's actually local here in Galena, Ohio, and she comes to us to share a very important message. Okay, and I think it's really important that we have it here at DACC live stream as well as in person um, because this spring there's a lot of events happening. Okay? We have prom occurring next Friday, March 17th at Medallion Country Club from 8 to 11 on that Friday evening. Pretty nice, Medallion. Uh, we also have a lot of graduations. We have our completion ceremony. We have a lot of, we have a lot of high school graduations this spring. So it's very important uh, <laughs> that we hear this message that Corrine Lamarca has for us today. Okay, she is the director of Jennifer's Message. Um, Jennifer is her daughter. <laughs> Unfortunately, she was killed in an automobile accident, okay, that involved an impaired driver. Okay, so that's, she's going to share that today. I wish with they wouldn't us. give my story away before right. I actually do it. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to make you aware. Thank you so much. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, we have a little uh, thing that we feel about um, crashes. We don't call them accidents, we call them crashes because honestly a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today are not accidents, they're easily preventable. So I just wanted to clear that up. It's just a minor thing that, that we feel is important, being victims. Um, well, hi. Again, my name's Corrine uh, Lamarca, and I am the uh, director of Jennifer's Messengers. And this presentation is about the reality of the outcome of marijuana use and driving. And please feel free to excuse yourself if you should feel you, you don't want to hear what we're about to talk about. You can go to the Commons. Um, if at any time um, I, you do become upset or you feel overwhelmed, you can also go to the Commons. It's really not that bad what I'm going to say, but I just want you to know that you have that opportunity. Uh, people have often asked me this question when they find out uh, what I've dedicated my life to. And they ask, uh, why do you want to be an advocate for impaired driving, against impaired driving, and against the legalization of marijuana? It's not a tough question for me. I say five words, because I promised my daughter. This promise was made in God's house with all of my family and friends around me, attending my most beautiful and beloved daughter's funeral. I was asked to speak uh, by the clergy that day, that horrible day in my life, uh, at her funeral, and I was so unprepared or even able to pull myself together when he approached me. He told me after I resisted that the spirit would guide me as he held out his hands and led me to the podium. Something of a divine nature happened to me. I felt the spirit of God. My voice was previously hoarse from crying constantly but it became low, steady, and clear. Oh, sorry. The words just started coming out as if I was watching myself. Just, yeah. Sorry. The next one, the next slide, just one second. I'm learning. He told me as I resisted that the spirit would guide me, but I, I was doubtful at that moment, I have to tell you. The words just started coming out, but I didn't know where they were coming from. I promised at that moment that I would work tirelessly. Oops, I did it again. This isn't working. Here, I'll do it. You fix it. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're trying something new here. My, my voice became low, steady, and clear, and the words just started coming out as if I was watching myself from the other side of the room. And I promised that I would work tirelessly for the rest of my life to avoid another such tragedy, so that another family wouldn't have to feel the pain that we felt. So you ask, what did marijuana have to do with this? Was Jennifer a marijuana user? Did she have friends that used marijuana? No, you'd be wrong on all those counts. Don't let my soft tone throw you off either. I am angry, I am incensed, and I'm outraged about what happened to my daughter. I believe that after you hear her story, and how such a promising and innocent and productive member of our society could be so violently killed 
because of the selfish decisions of another person using pot. And even though this might not have touched your life yet, you will feel the same outrage that I do. Now this is a story, one that has a terrible ending, and one that affects our lives each and every moment of every day. This also woke me up about the reality of legalizing medical marijuana and recreational mar marijuana and what a lie it really is. Jennifer was a recent graduate uh, with honors, student of the year in her curriculum, and top of her class from Notre Dame College in Cleveland, Ohio. She worked very hard for those achievements. She was a highly skilled athlete that attended Notre Dame College, like I said, on a lacrosse scholarship. Her major was intelligence and analysis research, and her goal after completing a successful internship with the law enforcement agency, HIDA, which is High Intensity Drug Trafficking of Ohio, was to fight drugs and to work at fighting illicit drugs with other law enfor enforcement agencies like the DEA. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Back. No, 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 no. Okay, one second. It's so, it's so sensitive. Her interest in Haida peaked after completing her internship with them and receiving an award for outstanding contributions in the program. One of her requirements was that in the curriculum was that she speak fluent multiple languages. She became fluent in both Spanish and Arabic and was able to translate both languages. These skills would propel her far to her chosen field. She had her first interview with Haida for a permanent position Shortly after accepting another job outside her field of study, she decided to take this other p position as a district manager to help gain valuable management experience and to begin to pay off one small student loan. Salary and benefits were too attractive to pass up until her dream position was acquired. Jennifer began her district manager position with a large company overseeing several hundred stores. She was required to learn the ins and outs of the business from the ground up. It was grueling with long hours and lots of physical work, but she knew that that's what it took to understand the business. At that time, she was dating Grant, a law student in his last year at Case Western Reserve Law School. We were all looking forward to a bright future for them in their careers. There was talk about the two of them traveling around the world and a future together after he finished law school. I saw great promise in them and all the positive things that they had to offer the world. Something that impressed me about Jennifer was the way she was always very concerned about helping others in whatever she could. Ever since she was very young, she would give blood at the Red Cross because she had a rare blood type. In high school, Donate Life came in to do a presentation on organ donation. It impacted her so greatly that she came home and told me she wanted to be an organ donor and, and, she re and she wanted to register for the organ, eye, and tissue donor program. I said, okay, we'll do it together when you get your driver's license. We did, but never did I ever think that that experience, that I would experience the outcome of that decision. After her death and donation, I spoke to over 100 schools across the state telling her story and warning about what can happen. I quickly learned. I hear it again. I quickly learned that in helping other people, we end up helping ourselves. And I'd really like to emphasize that. That really helped me. That was the last part of my grief. There's five steps, but the last one is when you help others, you help yourself. In college, when she would go out with her friends, once she was of age, she would always mention to me that she was the DD. At first, I wasn't sure what that meant, but soon I learned it meant designated driver, and they always had one when they went out. She learned that from the D.A.R.E. program that came into her school many years ago. I was so happy that they practiced this ritual on a regular basis. I felt she had a good head on her shoulders, and even when they traveled throughout the state, um, for tournaments, I felt like Jennifer was the one that promoted safety. During her graduation, my heart swelled with pride.
to see her speak at her graduation ceremony in her cap and gown and accept her hard-earned diploma. I remember writing in her graduation card, I'm not only proud of your accomplishments, but I'm proud of the beautiful and caring woman you have become. I did, I did breathe a, a sigh of relief, though, not just because she made it through with flying colors, but because I felt she was entering a much better and safer environment away from college life. She looked so sparkling that day in graduation and wore her honor sash with such pride as she should. There was really nothing I wouldn't do for her, but she was independent and made her own way. Just back one slide. It's, it's a rare quality that I saw in her, her ability to always want to help other people and be independent, and I admired it. Even though she was so strong, I still knew that the world could be a dangerous place and still continued to speak to her about staying safe and avoiding dangerous situations. Because you know, that's what we, we moms do, and we are always looking out for our children, no matter what age, including her brother Michael that's in the picture with me here. One night on July 4th, my husband and I were at the fireworks display in downtown Columbus, and Jennifer was working in Cleveland. We were ready to leave the event and go home. I asked my husband to check his phone to see if we had any missed calls, because I just had that feeling. Sure enough, we did. One from her boyfriend, who seemed to be panicked, and asked us to call him back. We returned his call. He said Jennifer was missing that she had not returned from work since 6 p.m., and it was now 10.30. He said that he went to her store where he thought she was working that day, and it was dark inside, and, and her car was gone. I can't explain to you the feeling I had at that moment. She was not answering her phone, and he had no other contact numbers for her. We advised him to immediately call the local police and report this event. The police department knew my Jennifer because she had done internships with them and at the local agencies as well. They started to look for her as we made our way from Columbus to Cleveland and beginning that long two-hour drive. The traffic was horrific and I'm sure you know what it's like after the fireworks go off. We drove quickly and tried our best because we wanted to make it there to help search for her. Then, out of nowhere, the telephone rang and it was Jennifer. She said she was working at another store and worked late and lost track of time. She said she was so embarrassed that we had the alarm sounded by, by us, and I said, well, I'm just glad you're okay, as we were afraid something really bad had happened. Now when I look back, I think this could have been the foreshadowing of, an, of the event to come. Needless to say, on our next trip to visit, we had a conversation over dinner with both of them about looking out for one another, communicating with one another better, and having emergency numbers ready. I thought I had done all I could to keep my daughter safe. Then, nearly two months after graduation from college, it was a Sunday evening, and I had just gotten off the phone with Jennifer. We talked for a while that night, and as as we were looking forward to our time together next weekend, when I would drive up and we would decorate and paint her new place. We had it all planned. She told me she was tired though, and from, from that long day at work, which I told you is, was arduous, and uh, she said that she was gonna go to bed. And I just, I said, okay, um, I love you. We exchanged I love yous. Um, and I pictured her that night, all snuggled up in her bed, all safe. And I felt really secure about that. I turned in as well, but then, all of a sudden, at 12.32 a.m., I woke up. My eyes were wide open, my heart was beating fast. I felt like something was very wrong. I wondered if I had just had a bad dream or if there really was something wrong. My husband tried to console me, but I knew it was more than that, so I got up. I decided to call my son Michael, who had just moved to a new city. I did not have his new residence information, and it made me nervous not to know exactly where he was. He gave it to me, and we talked for a while, and I went back to bed thinking that everything, um, the reason I was feeling that way was because I had this easiness because I didn't know where my son was 
After all, I knew my daughter was snug in bed. At 6 a.m. the next morning, the phone rang. It was Grant, Jennifer's boyfriend. We learned the news from him that my sweet, loving daughter Jennifer was killed the night before at exactly 12.32 a.m. Apparently, one of the stores that she oversaw had an alarm go off, and the store manager called Jennifer to meet her there. As she made her way to the store in her brand new work car, a man driving high on medical marijuana raced through the city, through the intersection, right through a red light. He was traveling at 82 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. He slammed into the side of my daughter's car who was crossing on a green light, careening her car out of control and through the front of a loop stop building. Jennifer never saw it coming. Jennifer was pronounced dead at the scene. Her life and all her dreams for the future came to a screeching halt. The 26-year-old man was basically uninjured. I found out from the police <clears throat> an important fact. He was given a medical marijuana car from the state of Michigan, and he was passing through our state high on THC from that marijuana. Some people are under the misconception that medical marijuana cannot make you high. This is not true. It is loaded with THC, the hallucinogenic drug in marijuana, and the active component in marijuana. The marijuana cards are handed out to just about anybody who asks for one by complaining about certain conditions that have, that um, they, they make a list in the legislature. And these lists are expanded all the time and they've been expanded in our state too. There is no current medical use for marijuana in my opinion. That's why it's classified as a schedule one drug. If it's marijuana, then treat it like, if it's, I'm sorry, if it's medicine, then treat it like medicine. And it's still federally illegal. So be careful out there. Even though our state has not legalized recreational marijuana yet, you are not out of danger. Thousands of people are killed and maimed on our roadways each year, and it's an estimated that another 7,000 people will be killed if legal legalization continues at this current rate. There are far too many out lies out there about marijuana. Most are spread by the marijuana industry. Whether it is smoking pot, using edibles, or vaping and dabbing, impaired driving is extremely dangerous and potentially legal, lethal. Now this, is, now this is where I have to go to visit my daughter at the cemetery. There are so many lies that have been perpetrated on the unsuspecting public, and that's you, about pot that need to be corrected and clarified, one of them, as I just mentioned, as pot makes you a better driver and it takes away your anxiety, nothing could be further from the truth. It actually causes anxiety. In many contacts with young people, such as yourselves, many say when asked, do you feel like you're a better driver? And a lot of them say they do. Well, this is a total delusion. It is quite the opposite. Clearly this illustrates where, that marijuana is a fat-seeking drug and since our brains are nearly 60% fat, pot concentrates in the brain and impairs all your senses. So how could it be true that you're a better driver when your brain is totally impaired? It, is, it significantly impairs judgment, motor coordination, reaction time, it impairs our visual senses, affects our eyesight, and giving us a tunnel vision effect. It actually causes loss of, your, of, of a young person's IQ, as many as eight to 10 points between the age of 12 and 25 when it is used over a long period of time. It also affects the total body. Marijuana has a negative effect on the lungs and it contains toxic chemicals including ammonia and hydrocyanide. It affects the heart by raising it from 20 to 50 beats per minute and even causing tachycardia that can lead to a heart attack. Pretty serious reactions, wouldn't you say? People are smoking THC resins as well. THC is a psychoactive, intoxicating component of marijuana, and this practice is called dabbing. These extracts they smoke came in various forms like hash oil, honey oil, and butter, and most concentrated is, is one called shatter and dab, among other products. 
Products such as soft drinks, brownies, gummy bears, cookies, chocolates, and even beer can be infused with THC. THC can put in just about any edible substance. And this is one something that is a really scary thing, and you might not know what you are ingesting. Many of these products contain three to 20% THC concentration recommended by, for intoxication. Packages are often marked to entice children with colorful labels, and they use um, characters that they're used to seeing on television. This actually happened to a friend of mine too, as far as not knowing what you are taking. Uh, she was given a lemon drop for her sore throat by a friend when she was flying home from out west, and she doesn't remember a thing for the next six hours when she woke up in her bed the next morning. That's really scary. Doses are not clear either. You may take it more than you, you may take in more than you can handle. One bite of THC infused cookie is a dose, but who eats one bite of a cookie? Another scary fact is that edibles take time to metabolize in the digestive system, and this can lead to driving under the influence as well as overdosing on THC. When they get in the car, they do not feel the effects yet, and they think they can drive. Then 30 minutes later to an hour, they are heavily impaired and behind the wheel of a potential killing machine. Think about your friends driving impaired while you were in the car, putting your life at risk. These unregulated products are made very accessible to all ages. This is a major concern for the mental health professionals because young people are, with developing brains are most vulnerable to permanent brain damage. Now, I know the evidence is clear. Marijuana comes with so many health risks and safety risks, and I have since become very knowledgeable on what it is doing to young people and how it has destroyed so many innocent lives. Through the work that I have done with several organizations, I have met countless parents who have lost their children in one way or another <clears throat> to this drug. Some examples are as follows. Lori, a cancer nurse who lives in California, raised her son to be educated and successful. Somehow through his acquaintances once he graduated from college, he became addicted to DAB. He ended his own life after a psychotic break caused him, caused him by marijuana. Another parent's son was using marijuana for pain and eventually destroying his own life and, not, and becoming violent, declaring that marijuana had killed his soul and ruined his brain. Phil, a pharmacist from California, lost his sister to a man driving high who ended up crossing over the center line of oncoming traffic, killing his innocent sister and injuring many more. Emergency rooms in pot legalized states are testing countless people who come into the emergency room with a condition called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. They arrive there with abdominal pain and severe vomiting and they are screaming while they are vomiting. It's not a pretty sight. There is no treatment for this other than stopping the use of marijuana. This is your body telling you you've had too much of this drug. Parents are addicted to kids. Parents, parents of addicted kids have noticed that their teens take, are taking hot showers several times a day, even so hot that they end up scolding themselves. My mission, is to, my mission as an advocate has become local, state, and a national pursuit. I've testified in the Ohio legislature against the legalization of marijuana in many other states, and I was shocked to see that there were only three other citizens that spoke up against legalizing it. But in a way, I understand, because I was just like them once. I didn't, it didn't affect my life, and I thought, I thought that I had heard the truth, but I didn't. It is, not, it is not harmless. Now I believe if marijuana really does have a significant use in the medical marijuana, then treat it like medicine, get it approved through the FDA in a double-blind study, and have it, and have it uh, put through the pharmaceutical board. Have it distributed like all other drugs with written prescriptions from a qualified doctor. There, was already a, there is already a drug developed for marijuana called Marinol, used by cancer patients to increase hunger. Today's pot shops are run by uneducated people called pot tenders. They are basically pot users. A person with a medical marijuana card takes advice from a pot user based on their complaints a totally unregulated way of distributing a, dangerous, distributing a dangerous drug. Most of the people that show up for these hearings that I spoke about 
to legalize pot have a vested interest in the pot industry and no interest in the lives that it affects. Here are a few books that I'd like to mention that will give you an insight into the dangerous marijuana industry. Tell Your Children the Truth About Marijuana, Mental Illness, and Violence, which is, which is I must read if you are concerned about the marijuana legalization. Alex Berenson is a writer, um, is the writer, and one day his wife, who is a psychiatrist, came home and was telling him that all the problems that she has with young people in her office was, was tied to marijuana. They were all marijuana users, and they were all suffering psychosis and, and other disorders. So he decided to do the research and wrote that book. Woe Dude is a book on the harm, harmful effects of cannabis and what science is telling us about the dangers of using it. Smokescreen is another book written by Kevin Sabet. Um, I actually work for his organization now. It's Sam Smart Approaches to Marijuana. And his website and book are very informative to understand the industry and how it is affecting our country. Traffic violations are daily events from marijuana use where lives are needlessly lost. Most times, you don't even hear about it through the media. And it's not always immediately clear if drugs like pot were involved. And there's no follow-up stories. They're very rare. Again, it's swept under the carpet at your expense. In our own case, nothing was mentioned in the newspaper about the man that killed my daughter, Jennifer. The headline read, and I quote, car hits business, woman 22 dies. Well, we all know that's not the truth. The man that killed her received a very light sentence uh, once his charges were pled down. And I, I also must mention here that the judge in our case told him um, he was sentenced in November, and the judge told us um, in front of the courtroom that he could stay out until January because his birthday was December 12th, and he wanted him to be able to spend Christmas and New Year's with his family and we would never see my daughter again. So th this was very hurtful to us <clears throat> and hurtful to all the people that love Jennifer. Okay. Is that it? No. Go back. Not the next one. I never thought this would be my life. And as I have said earlier, as I've said earlier, and that day I stood behind that podium at my daughter's funeral, it became my life's work. Jennifer was one of the strongest and most fearless people I've ever known. Jennifer believed in justice, and when she saw injustice, she would immediately say something about it. You see, I care about each and every one of you, and I hope that Jennifer's tragedy has impacted you in a positive way and you will make a good decision in not using marijuana or, or driving with anybody that's using it. In her senior year of college, as an example, she decided to coach a high school lacrosse team and not play on the lacrosse team that year. And she became aware of a young goalie on that team named Amanda, who was being excessively bullied by other girls because she was a little bit different than they were. Jennifer befriended her and talked with the other girls about the cowardly act of bullying. When Amanda found out that Jennifer had been tragically killed, she contacted me and was very distraught. Amanda told me through her tears that she was, very once, she was once very sad and thinking terrible thoughts in her head because of the bullying she had endured. After Jennifer took a stand for her, her life turned around and is much better. Amanda and her family have kept in touch with us over the past few years, and she has come to visit me and help me with projects I have done in Jennifer's name. She has now graduated from college in speech pathology, and um, like I said, Jennifer cared and made a difference and touched so many uh, lives in her short 22 years on this earth. While at her funeral, I told everyone that her death could not be in vain. I wanted no other families to have to feel the loss that we had. I wanted no innocent person to have their life taken away from them on our streets and highways because, because, <clears throat> because people were driving impaired on marijuana. We need to put an end to this insanity and prevent, another, and prevent any other such tragedies through education and awareness. 
My work and the work of other dedicated advocates is to educate the public about the dangers associated with marijuana and driving has not been easy. We have been criticized and called liars by our supporters, by supporters of the pot industry, uh, and they've been very vicious with us. We've been told that our stories are made up and they really didn't happen. Usually these attacks come from pot users trying to support their habit by their, with their limited vocabulary and their ignorant words. Yet this does not deter our efforts. Affecting change takes time and patience. Forming coalitions and working together is a key to a successful information being disseminated and giving a platform to advocates who dedicate their time and talent so that tragedies like ours are avoided. I already know our efforts have paid off, as I'd heard from a mom recently. She was with a, a friend of a friend of mine, and we were at a wedding, and she asked me to send her some information about pot and she quickly discerned that her daughter was getting high and driving impaired. It wasn't an easy conversation to have with her, you might imagine. She did find help and her daughter has remained drug free. She, both her and her daughter have expressed their gratitude to me for having shed light on this issue. Now her daughter is in college and doing well and I've heard from her mother that her daughter drank, thanks her every single day. I, of course, hope that there are many others that, will be, that I'll be able to influence, maybe even some of you today, because remember, knowledge is power. So you see, I know my mission is great and the odds are against our side, but I try to celebrate the successes we have and there is so much more to do. It is amazing what a small group of dedicated individuals can accomplish. I know the perils of driving on our roads today, and I am working to reduce the danger through awareness and education because I made a promise to my daughter, and this is a very important promise. She was my world. Some people say that I'm strong, and there is a certain kind of bravery that comes with this tragedy. I tell them, well, the worst thing that could happen to me already has. I want you to know that I do truly care about each one of you, our society and our country. Um, and once marijuana becomes more widespread, people will continue to drive impaired. Countless people were already, have already died in this drug trade. Homelessness is at an all time high. Just because it became legal doesn't mean that these things change or go away. They actually become emboldened. The black market of drugs does not go away. It is up to each one of us to find our truth and voice in our opposition. Don't let another tragedy like mine happen to you before you wake up to the reality of marijuana. I cannot do this work alone and I hope that you will join me and, and be, cons be a concerned citizen by becoming part of the solution. The power for change is in each one of us. Let, let's be the first state to say no to legalize recreational marijuana. Let's not live in denial, Ohio. My daughter's story is, is an important one. This is why the DEA in Washington has created a memorial display in, in their DEA museum located in their office. They're telling her story and keeping the lesson alive of of what driving impaired and impaired on marijuana can do. And as you can see, they wrote up there, why we do what we do. Her legacy will motivate others to tell the truth about this drug and how it has destroyed so many promising lives. And I wanna thank you all for listening to me today. That's the end. But I, I also wanna invite you to go onto my website. It's called Jennifer's Messengers. Well, it's, it's, um, there's a website and a Facebook page. I don't know if any of you are on Facebook. Is anybody on Facebook? <laughs> okay. Oh, well, good, good. So it's called Jennifer's Messenger Sounding the Alarm About Marijuana and Impaired Driving. It's a private site. No one else will see you on there. Um, and also, we are also available on Twitter. If I'm sure a lot of you do, do any of you do Twitter? Great, great. Okay, that's wonderful. So please come on there and, and make your comments. And, and maybe you could be the voice for the young person that can stop these horrible things from happening. Um, I'd like to thank you all for being here, and I would like to answer any questions that you might have, and there's no question off the table. 
So please feel free to raise your hand and I will ask your question. We got lots and lots of questions in the last one and I know the everybody was really happy to see that in the school. So I'm sure you have some questions. Anybody? I'll walk up to you. You don't have to ask them really loud. No questions about marijuana. I have a question. How many of you, after what I just got finished saying, how many of you think that marijuana and driving go together? How many of you know somebody that has actually driven a car high on marijuana? That's what I thought. All right, okay. How many of you would get in a car with somebody driving high on marijuana? How many of you would get in a car with somebody driving high? Come on, after this, I don't think so. I don't think that's the kind of question. You think what? Oh, I see, I see, I see. So uh, after, I, does anybody oppose what I say? Do, does anybody have any questions about the facts that I presented to you today? Yes. It, so does your website have like different sources on it so where I can find? The okay, there, there, thank you for asking that question because I forgot to mention this. There's another website, it's called Every Brain Matters. And it, I'm one of the creators of it. And on there is a, a million different resources okay. for you. There's Okay, there's podcasts, there's, um, there's information pamphlets that teachers can print out for their students. There's this great poster and it shows all the different parts of the body that marijuana affects and what it does. And it's, it's shocking. I, I really think you'd feel totally different about it if you saw this poster and see what it physically does to the body and the long-term effects. Was there a question back here? Okay, I'll wait. Do you, any other questions? We had a question earlier about, about should you use, if, if you were going to use something, is, is marijuana better than alcohol? Well, they're really two different things completely. Marijuana is a, is a fat-seeking drug, and it stays in your body. It clings to the fat in your body, like I mentioned before. So it goes right to your brain, gets out of your blood, goes right to your brain. Yes? Okay. No. Uh, marijuana is an hallucinogenic drug. Uh, that, that's a fact. <laughs> it's a class one hallucinogen. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. Okay? Please look that up. I didn't make that up. <laughs> any, other, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for listening. Oh, yes. Okay, well, I'm here to talk about marijuana-impaired driving. I could probably talk all day on alcohol-impaired driving as well. I'm wondering why you guys don't do both. You know, I, I guess I have to limit myself sometimes. I'm already in about three different cities in a week, and I guess, yeah, I, I would love to talk about that. They do go hand in hand, they really do. Well, I'll tell you something, I was with MAD for a while. When this first happened, I started speaking for MAD, because they're all about um, uh, alcohol-impaired driving, right? They wouldn't talk about marijuana. They wouldn't do that. So I thought, I'm gonna take on the marijuana in the driving issue. That, that's a very good question. And when I go back and think about it, I wish they would have done both, but they don't. I think it's got something to do with their grants. They have to stay within a certain lane. So I, I took it on. And there's not many of us out here. I wish you would all join me. I, I need help. <laughs> yes. I have a question. So I saw on that sign that it said it's federally illegal. Is that if you don't have a medical card or? That's a good question. Um, I think medical cards are issued from the state. It's still okay. federally illegal. Okay. Yes, yes. And, and there, are, there are some townships that won't allow grow sites and dispensaries because it's federally legal and they won't get their federal funds. Another important point to make. Well, I mean, I think yes. It's important to say that a medical card is not a prescription. It's a recommendation. School is associated, University of Cincinnati, University Hospital in Cleveland. Any doctor associated with a teaching institute 
definitely won't even recommend it. And a, and a medical marijuana card is not a get out of jail free card. If you are impaired on any substance, it, you know, that's impaired driving. So it's not, okay, oh, look at my card, I have this. No, it does not get you out of being impaired while you're driving. So don't think that. How many of you have ever taken a prescription medication that said don't operate large machinery when you take it? Are you familiar with what I'm saying? Well, that probably isn't on the little bag of gummies that you get at the smoke shop. No, no, and there it should be. A large uh, mechanical machinery is a vehicle. I am. Um, I work at the health district. I review. I have reviewed the last 175 deaths in this county due to driving um, crashes. I've been doing that for oh, going on 14 years, and every year a good percent of those people that die, it's because either they um, killed themselves because they chose to drive impaired or they killed somebody else. Um, honestly, they're both just as equally bad. And you're not a bad person because you drink or you smoke pot. You're a bad person if you do it and then put other people's lives in danger. That's what Corrine is talking about. It's not here to say whether one thing is worse than the other. They're both bad. Drinking is bad and doing drugs is bad, um, if, particularly if you are going to risk people's life, innocent people, um, when you're driving. That's what the point is. No, thank you very, thank you very much because I, I don't always say everything that I should because I'm answering a certain question. I appreciate that very much. I'm very passionate about that because I have met so many people whose lives have been just trashed because someone else made a selfish decision to risk it all and think that they are um, impenetrable. And, and you can't make these decisions once you're using the drug. You, you cannot be objective with yourself, okay? You can't say, I feel, I feel I'm okay, I can drive. You, you can't do that. You have to, if, if you're going to use these things, which I do not recommend, I do not endorse, either m marijuana or alcohol. I mean, they're both bad for your body. They're both bad for your brain. You know, we have enough things coming at us these days. I just don't think that we need those extra, we don't need to put those things in our body. Another thing I fight for is the drug interaction. Like if you're taking another drug and you're, they don't warn you that possibly marijuana could interact with the drugs already in your body. And you, we don't know what the consequences of that is. I know one thing, I work with a doctor and she tells me that when people come into the emergency room and they don't admit that they're using marijuana and they end up having a surgery, it affects the anesthesia. You know, it may not work properly. You may wake up in the middle of it, you know, because, and so if you are using, you need to be clear. With, with the medical professionals that you're using. And if your doctor is going to give you a certain drug for something, you need to let him know if you're using it because there's really bad interactions with these drugs. It's, a, it's a very potent. So, And thank you for the, dr for the question back there about alcohol and marijuana, and I had a chance to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kareem, for having a courageous conversation with us today. Let's give her a round of applause, please. Thanks. Just real quick, I picked up one, knowledge is power, okay? So our hope is, as a result today, that you are empowered to make smart choices, okay? So again, we want to empower you to be able to make smart choices. Thank you again. We appreciate you. Have a good day. I'm glad he